Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm of the opinion that Tesla's true company has not yet begun, and Tesla as a company is only in its embryonic stage. Tesla are laying down the foundation, technology, and infrastructure for robotaxis. In the Q4 2020 earnings call, Elon stated that a robotaxi should increase a car's utility by five times, as in they were previously able to drive 12 hours a week, they were now capable of driving 60 hours a week. Demand for transport is always the highest at rush hour. So what do you do in economics when demand is high? You raise prices. So robotaxis might have surge pricing when demand is too high. However, unlike Uber, using surge pricing to encourage more drivers on the road because they can earn more, obviously robotaxis won't be able to do the same. In other words, you won't be able to increase supply if all robotaxis are already operational. So what would be the point of surge pricing in robotaxis? Well, it would encourage people to use pooling instead, i.e. instead of having a robotaxi to yourself, you share it with a few other people. During rush hour, there's a lot of demand and a lot of people want to go from the same place to the same destination, so they can share a robotaxi together. It's likely the Model 3 and Model Y will be the most popular robotaxis, at least to start with before the Model 2 is rolled out at a large scale. However, the Cybertruck seats up to six, and up to seven in some Model Xs and Ys, but it might be likely there is also an option to share a taxi with up to four passengers total, so no one is squashed in the middle. The more passengers there are using pooling, then the less taxis or cars would actually be required on the roads. The issue with most rush hour traffic is it's predominantly people leaving home on their way to work, alone in a car. Even if they're married, they're likely to take a separate car from their spouse, as they will work at a different location and possibly different hours. And this is how we accept things. So you're usually dealing with single people in a single vehicle, Governments encourage more than one person in a vehicle by having things like high occupancy vehicle lanes that people can use if they have a passenger, and in theory, it means the lane moves faster and they can avoid some traffic. But although you and your spouse may not be headed in the same place at the same time, it doesn't mean some of your neighbours are not. Although it doesn't even have to be someone living that close to you, just anyone on their way to work, in the general vicinity. You might think that this would take a long time having to pick up passengers along the way and drop them off at various locations, but think about how many stops a bus makes. It would be a lot faster than that, and cheaper too. Tesla's AI, being the most powerful AI in the world, will be able to calculate the logistics much better than Uber. It will learn popular routes at popular times and be able to position their taxis strategically to predict where the passengers will want to be picked up ahead of time. It will be able to learn regular patterns. It will realize that certain passengers do the same trips on certain days at the same times and will be able to almost be there before they order the taxi. These are not human drivers driving around where their favorite fare is. These are robots moving around where they are most required. They know when demand will be low too, and will choose the most opportune times to recharge. Also, they wouldn't have to depend on a human driver that may add extra variables. Tesla's AI neural net after a while would know what are the most popular routes at certain times and would be able to quickly enough calculate the demand for these routes, along with helping logistics on where the robotaxi should locate themselves for various times of the day it can also give feedback as to where the most feasible boring tunnels could be built. Of course, the boring tunnels wouldn't just need to be for their robotaxis, but their own bus network. That would bus passengers from one part of the city to another, underground, like a subway. But unlike a subway, these buses, or electric sub-buses, would be able to go 150 miles an hour, and not have to stop and start at each destination. They would take you specifically from where you are to where you want to go. How is that feasible? because they cost about 1% less than traditional tunnel to build. So you can have a lot more of them for the same price. And although they cost less, they're worth more, as they transport much faster, and are also so much healthier. A lot of people are not aware of the health implications of taking a subway with all the brake dust pollution. Back to Elon Musk's statement from the earnings call about robotaxis offering five times more utility for a car. What if Boring Tunnel could double it again, or maybe even more? In other words, if the robotaxi was driving passengers in rush hour from one side of a city to another, it might take 30 minutes. Then the taxi drives new passengers to the other side in another 30 minutes. Well, what if the equivalent trip using a boring tunnel was just five minutes? The taxi could possibly do six times as many trips in the same hour, thus making it six times more valuable. Although a car is basically able to travel perhaps 23 hours a day, if you include cleaning and charging, that doesn't mean there is going to be demand for the car the whole time. But when the demand is high, the objective would be to transport as many passengers as quickly as possible. 
So when you combine pooling with railway taxis and boring tunnels, you could get across cities like New York, London or Paris in what must be something like at least one sixth or maybe even one twentieth of the time in rush hour or extreme traffic, adding so much more to the utility of the car again. And given that these cities are all compact, it would do so without adding too much mileage on the car and costing too much to build the tunnels. As the cars supposedly have a million mile battery life before too much degradation, although that's the current batteries, it's likely they could get up to two million miles soon enough. And the cars still work after a million miles anyway, just not as efficiently, but possibly still feasible. And who knows what the supercharger network would have evolved to by then. There might be huge supercharger stations underground in tunnels, or they may find some way to charge the cars while they're traveling in the boring tunnel. So a lot of people think that Tesla will stop selling their cars to the public as robo taxis are so lucrative, they can cut the middleman out just like they cut the car dealerships out. But where would Tesla store thousands of robo taxis? Where would they charge them all? Who would wash them and clean them each day? It does make sense to let private owners deal with all the maintenance and then passengers can rate their ride experience to incentivize the owners to keep them well maintained. And then in cities, they wouldn't need so many car parks. Even for people with their own private Teslas, they can send it back home when it drops them off at work. It doesn't need to be in a car park. A lot of cities charge a fortune for car parking and your car can come and pick you up again when you finished work. People seem to have a hard time believing me that Model S and X will also be used in the RoboTaxi network. They think that because these cars cost so much money, the owners wouldn't want passengers in them. But I've been saying it's likely they will join the network, just like Uber have a luxury option. Some people are willing to pay more. I remember spending the extra money in London ordering a luxurious Uber, which offered Mercedes S-Classes. Some people are willing to pay a bit extra for the luxury, especially when the robot taxi prices are already going to be so reasonable. Remember, the main cost of a traditional taxi or Uber is the driver. Once that's removed, it all becomes such good value. And at the end of the day, for the robot taxi owner, it comes down to the return on investment. If they can get a good return taxing out their Model S, then it's no different from taxing out a Model 3. It's all about income. Anyway, I believe this was evident with the new SNX facelifts. As I predicted, they would add an internal camera for this purpose. If any damage to the car is recorded and the app has the details of the passenger, then it removes the risk. And of course, they'll have Tesla insurance anyway. Although it might not be prudent to let your Model S plaid out on a Saturday night. Same deal with Tesla adding the wide screens into the SNX. These screens are mainly for entertainment purposes. You get in a robot taxi and you can watch Netflix, YouTube, play games, and likely hundreds, if not thousands of different apps to choose from to keep you occupied on your robot taxi trip. Of course, Tesla could play ads on these screens too, but I would think that would be off brand for Tesla. It's all truly amazing and I can't wait to see how it all plays out and report on it to all of you. So thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.